Welcome to Girlfriends of a Certain Age, a podcast for women in midlife. We are busy living our best lives. I'm your co-host, Fleshe Hesh. I'm a business coach and work-life balance expert for women. And I'm your co-host, Jessica Neighbor. I'm a voice coach for vocalists and public speakers online at Impact Vocal Coaching. We are girlfriends in real life, and in every episode, we'll discuss a different hot topic about becoming wise women, recovering from being a good girl, and not giving a bleep anymore. If you identify as a girlfriend of any age and you want to join our conversation, join us on Instagram, YouTube, and girlfriendsofacertainage.com. Hello, welcome to Girlfriends of a Certain Age. I'm your host, Jessica. I'm your other host, Fleche. <laughs> and this podcast is for girlfriends of a certain age who are coming into their own in their midlife and who are not giving a shit are going to be introducing each other to you, interviewing each other so you get a sense of who the hosts are of our podcast. So I would love to introduce now my girlfriend of a certain age, Flache Hesh. So hey, Flache. Hey. Flache <laughs> Hesh is a mom of two young boys, a CEO, author, and podcaster. Flache is trained as a marriage and family therapist. And these days she is a business coach for women and a work-life balance expert. Um, she's my coach and she's fabulous. An empathetic psychic and healer, Flache is busy living her purpose by empowering women to ditch the guilt, set themselves free and neutralize the narcissists in their path. She recently launched the podcast girlfriends of a certain age with her BFF, Jessica. Hey. She lives with her mountain climbing software engineer husband and two sons. They split their time between Northern New Mexico and Northern California, chasing sun and snow everywhere in between. Woo, Shay. Oh, that's me. Ay, ay, ay. All right, girl, we're gonna get into it. I wanna ask you a few questions just so our listeners can uh, understand who this girlfriend is. Um, so uh, where are you originally from, Lache? I, I'm from Oakland, California. Woo, woo. Um, <laughs> and him. Uh, and then my husband and I moved to San Francisco and that's where we had our babies and, and raised them until they were little guys. Um, yeah. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and you, in the introduction, obviously do a lot of different things. Can you explain a little more what you do these days? It feels like you are a Renaissance uh, woman of sorts. So what, what do you do in your, in your, you know, normal life these days? Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I have, I feel like I've lived a lot of different lives. I'm, I'm 49 years old and I feel like I have learned the art of reinvention mm -hmm. that I feel very unafraid of saying, you know, I like this. I'm pretty good at it, but where's the, there's this other thing I want to check out too. So I, um, got my undergraduate degree in psychology, got my master's degree in counseling with an emphasis in marriage and family therapy. Mm -hmm. And I was on track to become a marriage and family therapist. And then I um, had this weird turn of events. My boyfriend at the time, now husband, got a chance to live in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And so I quit my internship. I was almost done getting my hours to become a therapist. And I moved to Ireland for six months with my man and, ah! and we had this fun adventure. And I had this fantasy that I would work for a US company. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing. And so I would type into Craigslist back in the day, mm -hmm. uh, telecommute uh, part-time, I think is what I typed in. And I got hired from Ireland mm. uh, to be a business coach for a pet sitting and dog walking franchise. And I, the light bulb came on and I was like, Let's see, I am working my tail off to become a therapist, to support my, my habit as a healer, mm -hmm. making basically no money, you know, nannying and scratching together the money. Even the licensed therapists I knew at the time were not making great money. Mm -hmm. And I realized I could just call myself a coach and make a bunch of more money, mm -hmm. have my time be my own, not spend my day with anxious and depressed people. 
and have to work for a living. Like if I'm sick, I don't get paid. If, if I you know, want to take a vacation, I don't get paid. I just started realizing the business model of being a therapist for me mm-hmm. at that time did not match or align with the, the life I wanted to live. And so I became a business coach. And then I have my baby a few years later and I did not want to go back to working for someone else. And I realized I was living in San Francisco at the time, and mm-hmm. there were so many women like me who, for a lot of us, maternity leave was the first break any of us had given ourselves since we started working full time. And mm-hmm. I started working full time when I was like 17 years old. So all of a sudden, here I am, educated. I had a great job, making good money, living in a very expensive city, and I didn't want to go back to work. And so I just dug real deep and I coached myself and I thought, I'm going to do business coaching just for moms. And in San Francisco, that was really easy to do. It was like, it was great because everybody was in a very similar place. And so that's how it morphed. And that was, that was about the time that we started working together. So just full disclosure, we have coached each other because that's what girlfriends do. And um, Flache was absolutely foundational in helping me really leverage my music coaching, my voice coaching um, from kind of a scrappy, you know, very loosey goosey business to up leveling it. And um, she just was so helpful for that. And I, I vividly remember Flache back in the day, you, you know, living in San Francisco, uh, me in the East Bay, us working together and, you know, we continue our journey to this day, but that's um, kind of when our girlfriend bond uh, clicked in, right? Um, besides going out and dancing in like um, fun, like hip hop clubs with a, a group of girlfriends, but that's for another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And you were in my wedding. You know? Oh yeah. I sang at your wedding. That's right. Right. No, so you and I go way back. You we and do I go way, way back. And so it's yeah. fun to continue this girlfriend journey and invite others in on it with us. Right. Mm-hmm. We've got a lot of room in our hearts for a lot of other ladies to come and join the fun. Absolutely. So yeah. you were doing that voice. I mean, you were doing your coaching and, and deciding that you were going to do that for moms and you were in San Francisco, but now you are like this, um, you're some, you're based somewhere else. So what, what happened from that point on? Right. Well, my husband and I both work from home and we have two little boys and we realized, you know, we knew that they probably wouldn't go to public school in San Francisco. Um, where would we live next? And so we decided to go and check that out. And so we went to Oregon for a little bit. We came to Santa Fe to check it out, my husband's hometown. But the idea is that we we live in both places. And um, that's been really healing, really nice for me. But it, it takes a lot of work and effort, obviously, to, mm-hmm. to, to manage that and maintain it. Um, and so, but it, it's been really interesting for our family and for our personalities to sort of have these two home bases and amazing people in both who love us and embrace us and never want to see us go and always want to keep us. I feel really fortunate to, to have an opportunity like that in my life. Um, yeah, that's what so many people dream of doing, you know, that's a really cool way to be living your life. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then these days I'm really focused on work-life balance. Um, I mean, Mm -hmm. for myself, obviously I have a pretty complicated life. Mm -hmm. And so um, (laughs) I'm living it and eating my own dog food, if you will, but that's how I spend most of my time now. And um, when you and I started talking about this idea of doing a podcast, it just seemed like such a natural extension to, to speak to, to a larger audience and to share we, you and I have been gaining a lot of wisdom and information. We've been very curious. We're reading a lot of books. We're listening to a lot of things, podcasts, mm-hmm. articles. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're really trying to educate ourselves on this new stage of life. And you and I are both seeing how different it is. And um, so it really feels like a, an interesting and powerful time to share what we're learning mm-hmm. and to be just doing it together. I love doing it together. Well, that's what I was going to ask you next is how do you feel um, using our podcast title about being a girlfriend of a certain age? How do you feel at this stage of life? It's a very interesting one. I find, you know, we're, we're not our young selves anymore. We're not the elders yet. We're in this very interesting bridge area. And how are you feeling about that? I feel more powerful, more 
more beautiful. I feel stronger. I feel more mm. capable mm. turning 50 than I did even at 30. And 30 was a real, real light fireworks kind of year for me. I really came into my own. Yeah. So that I'm doing that even more, even more, even more, even more now turning 50. I'm like, hot damn. How come not everybody is talking about this? Right. And the women who would talk about it, it was kind of quiet. Well, I'm kind of happier now. It's kind of better, but it wasn't a strong, powerful voice saying it's better now. No, but I want to, I want to shake my freak flag and say, it is amazing <laughs> over here. Come on, girls. Let's all talk about it. Let's yes. talk about where we are in our cycles and talk about where we are in, in our relationships and how we're really coming into our own. Oh. You know, I, I just feel like I have energy now for things that I didn't have energy before. Granted, having my kids be more launched, but they're still in elementary school. I mean, your mm -hmm. kids are further along than mm -hmm. I am. But mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. Everything takes a lot of energy. And I don't have as much as I used to. And I'm seeing that, but I'm realizing, oh, that's what self-care is about. That's right. what self-care is about. Realizing what you got to work with right. and working with it, working it. Right. It's not the, yeah. you know, Calgon bubble bath and bonbons, you know, it's, it's genuinely like <laughs> a, a, a life, you know, necessity. It's a whole other uh, thing that you feel into. I love that. Today's episode is brought to you by the five minute work life balance digital workbook. I'll be teaching you the three-step process to achieving work-life balance in your own life. I'm Flesche Hesh, trained as a marriage and family therapist, turned professional business coach, and work-life balance expert for women. I'm a mom of two, CEO, published author, and podcaster. I'm going to teach you how to take back your time and your life so you can forget about feeling guilty, overwhelmed, and out of balance. You'll also discover the nine unexpected strategies for you to achieve work-life balance. You can get instant access to the digital workbook, the online course, and access to me, your coach, today for a limited time for $29. The link is below. Well, along the same lines of like coming into your own and oh i'm just like picking up on your you know fumes you're letting off and it feels so good um what do you feel like is something that you no longer worry about or in our podcast language don't give a shit about that used to really matter to you especially as a young woman in your 20s can you mm -hmm. think of one thing I just want to curl up and cry. And mm. when I think about how many years of my life I wasted on being liked, mm. I just wasted so much energy, so much life force, so much time, so much brain power. Do they like me? Oh, I think they don't like me. I could have said that differently. Oh, I could have, I could have, should have, would have, you know, but, and now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I feel like it's very quick. Like, but I realized this moment, Oh, right. There is power in being disliked. Mm -hmm. There is strength in that. And so that is one thing I don't give a shit about anymore. Mm. Mm. That that 20 year old really did care about. And so it's like, it's healing for the young uh, listeners. If, 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 you know, this is resonating with you to understand that you can give yourself permission to not be the good girl and the nice girl. And you know, to understand yourself. I can so relate to that. And I think so many of our listeners can really, really relate to that one. And it is a gift of getting older and wiser and sometimes just from getting burned so many times, you know, from being so generous and getting depleted and just going, no, no. So I love that. And I think that's such a valuable thing and really something that does come with aging. I love that. It does come with age. And I, I, you know, I would other older women would say this to me, well, honey, mm. at a certain point, you just don't care. And I would always say, and I actually didn't say, but I would think in my own head, but I wasn't articulating it to them. And maybe I didn't even know how at the time, Yeah. but how, right. how did you do it? Is it age? Is it hormones? Is it yeah. what, what is it? Um, is it just being burned too many times? And so that is a topic that we'll, we'll actually cover this season in depth. We will yeah. teach you how yes. to not give a shit, no matter what age you are, what, what approach you're coming to your life with, right? because we feel like it's so important. We'd like to, you know, like I didn't, I don't feel like I really have all the mentors that I need heading into this, 
but hot damn, I could be one to someone who's a few steps behind me and 100%. And that is a big part of what you and I are calling in with this podcast. And, and one more thing, um, um, along the same line is that I, that I wanted to add in is I think when my younger self used to hear that, oh, you know, I just don't give a shit anymore. I had this link about um, really letting oneself go, like not caring, but in a very kind of like um, disconnected way, right? Like the older woman who just set, speaks her mind, but she's kind of abrasive. And it's not that it's like this wisdom. It's this, it's actually being more empathetic and being more caring for the world, but also for ourselves and putting ourselves into that equation, you know, and instead of, I think what the, the culture at large sometimes shows us, oh, you know, that kind of batty old lady who's just wandering around shaking her cane at everybody, you know? (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's this cultural stereotype. Um, so, and I think that a lot of that is coming from ego, right? Like I am a cranky old lady. I've earned my place. You will do what I want because I said, it's time for you to do that thing. And most people, or even women in the workplace, you know, we, we get called bitches for, you know, knowing our minds, not taking no for an answer. The culture does not support women in Mm -hmm. standing in their truth Mm -hmm. and, and and living from that place and making choices from that place. So the difference is coming from the heart. And if my heart is activated, then I'm going to take really good care of myself. Mm -hmm. And if I'm taking really good care of myself, I don't need to get you to get my needs met. Right. There's something very gentle about it. There's actually not even a lot to hook into and fight about because it's like, that's just not for me. Yeah. That's all. Yes. It's okay. It, yes. And I can it, still yeah. feel loving toward you if I'm, you know, if I need something different. So I think that's a big part of, of what's been missing. Yes. And because women aren't supported at some point, all, some, some ladies of a certain age might just push their way through because it's for their own survival. Yeah. That's but there a really is good a, point. There, is a really um, feminine mm-hmm. and graceful, mm-hmm. and fun and playful way to do it, to get our needs met, to be ourselves, to speak our truth. And we don't have to take the whole world down with us or burn bridges right. or any anything else. Yeah, it's so good. It's so important, I think, for us to dismantle some of these stereotypes because we don't have as many role models. So, uh, you know, going into the basically second half of your life, I mean, this is a, this is a significant chunk of your life. And so I think that's really key to think about. Um, I have just a couple more questions for you. You're fabulous here. Um, What is is your main hope that you want girlfriends um, to get from this podcast? What would you, what's your hope for them to take Mm. away after listening to this? Community. Mm. Community. I think that so many of us are very isolated and very lonely and, and, uh, you know, we feel like technology is connecting us more than ever. We've got these really powerful, you know, computers that we carry around in our pockets or in our purses or backpacks, uh, and they're always on. And the, the we're always getting bing, bings, bongs, and beeps, and <laughs> our socials blowing up, or it's dying away, or someone that person you were hoping would see that post saw it. No, yeah, you're all a, you know all a buzz, mm-hmm. but that's actually making us more and more separate from each other, and. Uh, a lot of what people are sharing these days about their inner lives are very um, artificial Mm -hmm. and very made up, or they're just showing up a high moment. Like I just got a new car. I just took a new trip. I just fell in love. Look at, look at my, my kids and their matching outfits, but it's not real and it's not of the heart. And even though it might feel good to post that in the moment or or have someone see that post or even see you in a certain way, Mm -hmm. I think that it's creating some crippling loneliness Mm -hmm. and aloneness. Mm -hmm. And I'm reminded of a a hike I took with a friend about a year ago. And and we were talking about where are we at in the menopause journey? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I don't know if I should really talk about this. My sister told me that I shouldn't be talking about this out loud. I, I, I shouldn't even be talking to her about it. Wow. 
And I said, well, that's some garbage. You don't get to be like that around me because yeah. I want to talk about it and I yeah. need to talk about it. And I need for you to be able to talk about it so that we're on this journey together. We're the exact same age. We're in a similar process. We're having similar feelings. Yeah. Wait, I need you. I need you more than ever. Yeah. Please share your truth. Please tell me, tell me how your vagina is doing. Tell yes. me, you, are your hormones messing you up? Tell me what your doctor said. Right. Um, you know, I just... I just want us to be able to talk about it. And I don't know what the listeners experiences of this, but every time I've looked up menopause symptoms or mm. feeling empowered, the second part of life or what, whatever the thing is, yeah. um, I find that it's really depressing yeah. and, and it's, it's like, um, it leaves a bad taste in the mouth. Yeah. And so like, I, I kind of struggle with the two M words like midlife and, and menopause. I don't think they're bad words, but I think that the cultural connotation that's been laid across them is like, girl, just give it up. Just stop trying. You're totally. just going to gain a bunch of weight. You're just going to, the wheels are going to fall off. Your knees are going to stop working I, I and think, your hearing goes. I think we have to take a concerted effort to reclaim those words, midlife and menopause and make them into something that's our own. I mean, I would love to reinvent those words, but they're the words I think we're kind of um, living with at the moment, but how do we reclaim those? And yeah, when you, when you do a Google search, be careful. It, the first things that pop up are not cute. They're depressing. Cute. Um, for me, they like cause a lot of anxiety. Like they're scary. Like they're telling you that your vagina is going to like shrivel up and fall out between your legs and your hair is going to fall out and you're going to be this, you know, it's just a really grim, um, outlook on life. And we have to think, who does that serve? Who does that benefit? And we know it's not benefiting us. So just ways to reclaim it. I'm, I'm with you yeah. in that journey 100%. And it's so fun to be doing this in real time because like we are living it, we are doing it. And we really want to cut through that curated social media, you know, kind of lifestyle that <clears throat> we're all having to kind of contend with now. When do we get to share about feeling bloated and having hot flashes, um, you know, uh, in a, in a real way, as well as celebrating all of the wins and good things. So I, I just love that. And we're gonna, yeah. How can we keep it real? I, yeah. I really want to create a space where we can keep it real. Yeah. I think that's, that's a big part of it. And, um, if you start looking for things to celebrate, hot damn, they are there. And sometimes you just need to hear someone else's story to be reminded how you can apply that you know, and to your changing your thinking. Yes. Oh, oh, so, oh, that, that marriage ending, maybe that was actually a gift to me because now I'm free and I don't have to deal with their, oh, there could be another way of looking at this. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. that is my biggest hope and prayer and blessing for this podcast and these conversations that you and I are, are having and will continue to have. I love it. I love it. Well, we want to involve our listeners in this conversation. We want them to be girlfriends of a certain age. We named this podcast intentionally for each other and for hopefully the group, the collective come hang with us. So how can people find you Flache, and how can they join in the conversation with you? Mm. So my website is thebusymom.com. The spelling of that's a little unusual. So you can find that in the liner notes if you want. And of course you can come find me on social media. I'm on Instagram and I'm on YouTube and Facebook. And, um, but mostly I love to connect with people inside of my email list. I feel like that's the most personal, um, because again, I don't want to be fakey, fake fleshé on social media, mm -hmm. just showing off and making you feel bad about something that you're not doing. And I don't want to feel bad about something that I think I'm supposed to be doing that you're showing. So I really, um, I'm, I, I feel like a, social media is not really my main thing. I do it because mm -hmm. it's part of growing a business in the modern world. But to me, I'm much more interested in your heart. I'm much more interested in what you're interested in. I really want to hear you and feel you. Um, and maybe that's just the empath in me. That's the, that's, that's all I want. Now that I'm a grown up lady, I'm going to 
communicate in the way that feels best to me. Awesome. And so we'll yeah. put, we'll put all of those links in the liner notes in the show's liner notes so that you can connect with cliche in the, uh, real authentic way, whatever way suits you, um, through the many, many channels that we now are all, um, working with. Well, thank you for sharing yourself and some of your experience with us. I hope that you girlfriends out there feel like you know a little more about Flanche. Thanks for being in the hot seat. How was it? <laughs> you know, I, I'm more comfortable being in the interviewer's seat. I will uh -huh. say there's a reason why homegirl uh, trained herself to become a therapist <laughs> um, and then a coach, but um, it was good. It was yeah. good because it's not the kind of, I wouldn't just jump out and just start saying all these things about myself. So it was great to have you asking the questions, holding the space and reflecting back and keeping me moving because I'm, I'm a, I'm a wordy one. I like to talk. And, um, so I feel like you really helped frame the conversation and, um, I'm so excited to hear where our listeners are at. I would, you know, if there's anything that I said that you would like to learn more about or that you want to say, yeah, me too, please leave us a comment below. Your comments mean so much to us mm -hmm. and definitely subscribe to, to us and follow us and, and do your download us when we pop up in your podcasting software for the next episode, because we want to be here for you. We want to yes. support you. We want to lift you up. We want to celebrate you yes. and really see you at this stage of your life because yes. you deserve to be seen all of you. Yes. We love it. Come, come join us in our girlfriend, girlfriendness. We would love it. Well, thank you. And um, thank you listeners for checking into us today. We'll be back with another episode of Girlfriends of a Certain Age or G-O-A-C-A. -A. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'll be in the hot seat next episode. So stay yes, tuned you will. for an interview. Oh boy. And uh, thanks so much, you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today to Girlfriends of a Certain Age podcast. Do you have a girlfriend who needs to hear this message? Share this episode with her. She will love you forever. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, rate, and comment wherever you get your podcasts. Stay tuned for more episodes where we discuss more hot topics about girlfriends living their best lives. You can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and girlfriendsofacertainage.com.